It's only complicated if you make it complicated, Kale. Okay, what is up everyone? Old Willow Scrub here. We are back with more Cold Decept Revolt. Yes, this is. Actually, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon X. I, I played about seven or eight hours of Pokemon X in the past couple days. I haven't really been playing a lot of Revolt. Let me just change the filter on my mic. Should be better. But today starts the first of many book guides like I was doing in Cold Decept Saga. Now I'm going to be going through as many books as I can. I technically have access, well, I have access to every card in the game, uh, four of every card, so I can make any book. I also have, I think, at least 750 books that Japanese players have made and have shared online. I have those on my computer. Oh, I, I think I played 15 hours of this on the 3DS, and then now with streaming, I have four of every card for streaming. And then, yeah, I I got into Pokemon X, and I'll be getting probably Ultra Sun when that comes out next month. But now starts, like I said, the beginning of the book guides. This book guide is relatively simple. I would have some type of text or something underneath uh, the left side where it says enjoy the story and collect cards by fighting against computer controlled characters. I would technically have more information, but I just threw this together a couple days ago. So we're still working on that. But the first thing you're going to note is on the right hand side of the screen you're going to see a bunch of images. That is, with one modification, that is the book that I'm using. Okay, I think I might actually have to make it. Alright, so this is the book I'm working on. One note, you're gonna, you're gonna see one thing different, and that is the top, the first top one is a dragon. It's an Evo card. In Cold Decept Revolt, you can get uh, Evo cards in America, in Japanese, they're called Breed. I call them Breed, but for the sake of streaming, they're Evo. I only have one regular Evo. I don't have the two. This book is designed for farming GP quick. Also, Kale, thank you very much for the host. I don't have Ankbot actually up to see. But this book is designed to gain GP, and GP is what you use to buy a booster pack. Um, you can get booster packs from the shop. I actually don't need to buy any. And they cost GP. This is not real world money, this is in game currency you get for beating people. And one of the best ways to get GP are with Evo cards. Uh, the Evo Dragon you see in the top left, underneath the, um, like the second screen for the, the 3DS, where you see the dragon and you see this totem. Evo Dragons have age ranges from 1 to 10. When you get an Evo Dragon to level 10, you can reset its age back to 1. Any part or anything you've ever done to that dragon also resets. 
So you have to rem you have to take that into consideration. You can lose parts if you reset a dragon. Why you might reset a dragon is every age reset is worth 300 GP. Going from a level 10 to level 1 for each dragon nets you 3,000 GP. So doing 10 matches with this book, and there is a guide for that, it's relatively quick. You can, with this guide, you can get, um, I think you can get the match down to 5 minute matches. So in an hour, you're going to gain about at least 8,000 GP just from matches, and then you're going to get an additional 6,000 GP from resetting the dragons. Get that late response though. Hey, Ghostbusters 2 said better late than never. If it worked for the Titanic, it'll work for me. So I don't I only have one regular dragon. But you really don't need it for this book. I substituted it for a window pope. But we're gonna go and look at all these cards. First you have uh, the golden totems. These are not really put down to hold land per se. You put them down, they have zero strength and 30 HP. And they can use armor, so if you had to, you could defend with it. But it has a secret art for zero mana. And it gives you 200 magic and then is destroyed. This book is all about getting mana quick and putting down your kelpie quick so and leveling it up so in order to do that you need to get GP fast golden totem is one such way put it down uh, get GP next card we have is bird maiden bird maiden is a 30 strength 30 HP creature and it's vigorous. In this game, there's a thing called standing. Basically, when you put a creature down, kind of like if you played other card games, they have haste, so they can't do much. Well, fatigue system is similar. When you put a creature down, if it's not vigorous, it goes into play tap down. It can't do anything. And if you're going to use your secret art, like this one has a secret art for 50 magic, and it adds distant movement to target creature, to any creature you control. What that is, is that means you can literally move your creature anywhere. It's kind of like um, Spirit Walk. You can literally move a creature anywhere. Uh, Bird Maiden can put it, for 50 magic, you can put it on any creature you own. So if you had a Kelpie on the field, you can, and let's say somebody, let's say you had a Golden Totem for some reason on a level 4 water land, and somebody destroyed that, the, the creature. The land is still level 4, so you can use Bird Maiden's ability to move Kelpie onto it and get that land back. You can also use it to put a creature on a water land so you have the requirement for Kelpie to be used. Bird Maiden is used in many books. It's a really great card. Next. This is another uh, vigorous creature. It regenerates. Okay, this is 20 strength, 40 HP. Um, it's vigorous, so it's it's not gonna stand down, and it regenerates. So if it took 30 HP in battle, at the end of battle, its HP will replenish. Great for putting it down onto water land and holding land. Uh, next, you have the reason for this book, and that is Kelpie. Now this book is not really going to help you against uh, player versus player. You're going to need a couple different cards. 
you're going to have to remove the card that's right below Kelpie, which is Greed. Add in some other cards. But for AI, this is a great farming book. Kelpie, like Old Willow, if it's placed on a matching land element, so since Kelpie is water, if you place it on a water land, all users, except for the person who owns Kelpie, has to stop on that land. So that means that if you put it down at a part in the map where everybody has to travel, every single person but you has to stop on it. Okay? Now that's only half the battle. The other half is, you know, how are you going to protect it? We'll, we'll get to protecting Kelpie in one moment. Okay, next we have Makara. Makara is a 30 strength, 40 HP creature that's defensive and it has vigorous. And its secret art for 100 magic is transforms occupied territory to waterland. What's great about this is you can put Makara down on, let's say, an earthland, level that up to three. You could use its secret art to transform it into water and then move it off that land. And why you would move that off the land is because you can use Birdmaiden's ability, Bird Maiden's ability to give Kelpie distant movement and have Kelpie move onto that water land. Okay, so there's not really a lot of creatures. Now we're going to get into one of the only two different types of items that we have. We have Sphere Shield. It reduces your strength to zero, and it neutralizes normal attacks. In Call the Seth games of past, they were known as non-scroll attacks. I don't know why they changed it to say normal attacks, but it basically means it neutralizes everything that's not a scroll attack. So if you were to attack quote unquote normally, it would get blocked. What's great about this card is this card can be used on any creature that can use an armor. Okay, the next card can only be used on certain creatures for neutralization, but Sphere Shield can be used on any creature that has uh, the ability to use armor. Next armor we have is Storm Shield. Kind of like Magma Shield, Storm Shield neutralizes normal attacks when it is equipped onto water or air creatures. Okay, so you're not going to be using Storm Shield on the Golden Totem. And you're not going to use it on Bird Maiden. You can use Spear Shield on them because they can both use armor. And Storm Shield is great for the three water creatures we have, especially Kelpie. Now let's look at spells. We have four foresights. You get to look at the top six cards of your book, select one of them, and place it in your hand. And what's nice about this is the top six cards, they're going to be the exact same lineup when you're done with this. Like there are some card games where it says look at the top X and then take one and shuffle the book or shuffle your deck. This one literally just, you look at the top six, you go, okay, I want, let's say I want Sphere Shield. And you know that the first card that's going to be pulled next turn is Kelpie next turn you're getting Kelpie. It puts the cards back in exactly the same order, just minus the one card you took. Next card we have is Greed. Greed is really powerful now compared to older Coldesef games. Greed used to give a creature a negative enchant known as Poison. Uh, poison became way more powerful back in the day or, I mean now, sorry, 
uh, Poison used to do like 10 or 20 HP at the end of battle. Now Poison does um, half of your HP is cut out. So instead of giving cards like Greed the Poison, now you just draw a card, which really makes Greed more powerful than ever. And Greed adds 1.5 times toll fee to target creature. Uh, so if your toll fee was 2800, which is level 5 land on a level 5 chain for a normal land value, you're going to be looking at about 3600 when everything's said and, all said and done. Because they're going to be paying the 2800 plus an additional half of that. Next card we have is great for stealing magic from an enemy, and that's Land Drain. You steal magic based on target um, enemy scepter's territories times 30. So if your enemy has 10 territories, you're going to steal 300 magic. It's, it's really good to get magic quickly, and because it actually steals it from your opponent, you can put them in the negative. For instance, let's say your opponent only has 100 magic, and they have 10 territories. You can literally steal enough magic to put them 200 magic in the hole. So at the beginning of the next turn, they actually have to liquidate their property. Next card we have is Magical Leap. It's probably one of the best cards that you can get because of what it does. Now there is a card called Escape where you can do almost the same thing, but you can only escape if the land around you is vacant. You cannot escape at all if lands that are directly around you are not vacant. It won't work. Magical Leap, however, will let you transport to any territory one to four spaces around you. So, what's great about that is you can land on your own territory, or if you know that you can land on an opponent's territory that's not too high, like maybe there's two level fours in a row and a level one right after that and you know you can land on that level one and skip those level fours here comes magical leap to save the day um, magical leap can also be used for beginning of a second lap where when you would pass by the last gate you can actually magical leap onto that gate on your next turn because remember, you have to hit each gate. So if there's three gates, and you've passed, let's say, north, west, and east, and the last one you touched was east. Well, let's say you're one to four spaces past that gate. Well, now you can literally magical leap yourself right on that gate and give yourself a little bit of, of a speed advantage and be able to target any of your territories. Okay. And we're going to see that card in action. I'm going to show you how to do it and how to not do it. Once I know I'm actually in the lead and I know I won't screw it up, I'll show you what happens when you do it the wrong way <laughs> or how wasteful it is. Although I will say you can use it the wrong way if it lets you win. Again, when we're in an actual match, I'll show you how that works. Next card we have is Mana. Now, I would never recommend using Mana in Cold Deceptive Revolt, Revolt, except for this book, and maybe a few other books that could benefit from it. Mana gives you laugh number times 50 in magic. You can use it right away to get 50 magic. Technically, it counts that as one lap. And the more you lap, the more magic you'll get. 
The reason why I would never use mana in a lot of books is I would use a card called Gift. Gift costs 100 magic, so obviously you can already see it costs way more than mana because mana's free. But Gift lets you gain magic and draw cards based on your rank in battle. Meaning, let's say you're playing a four player free for all and you're in fourth place. For paying 100 magic, you're going to gain 200 because you're going to gain 50 magic for, for your rank, for your level. So 50 times 4 is 200 and you get to draw 4 cards. Even in second place, the card could cost free and you draw 2 cards. Okay, drawing your cards is way better than getting like 50 or 100 magic more. Especially in Rebolt since you gain magic every time it's your turn, it's 20 magic per turn plus whatever the round level is. So if the round level was 10, you would gain uh, 30 magic. If the round level was 25, you would now be gaining 45. Next we have Storm Shift. Storm Shift is a great card. It can transform a target level 3 or lower water land into an air land or a level 3 or lower air land into a water land. Meaning let's say you get Kelpie on, a, on an air land and you pump that up to level 3. You can storm shift that into water. And now because it's on water it'll stop everybody else except for you. It's also really cheap to do that because now you have to be on airland in order to do this, so just note that. But you're looking at, you know, paying pennies compared to what it would be. Because at level one airland, to transform that into water normally costs 300 magic on level one. Level 3 costs 500 magic. I believe it goes up 100 magic per level to transform its uh, element type. Yeah, so it's going to cost 500 magic to go from a level 3 air land to a level 3 water land. This card is 120. It literally is a fraction of the cost. And finally, to round it out, to replace the two Evo Dragons, I put in two Wind of Hope. Just figured, you know, if you have a bad hand, draw two cards. It'll help you. Okay, so now we're going to give give this book a little test. We're going to go into solo match. Uh, I don't know. Should we use Samana? Yeah, maybe we should. Doesn't really matter. Um, sure. The map we are going to use is going to be unknown to me. I will do random. Now, this could be good. This could be bad. We could get a really good map, or we can get a really complicated pain map. So let us take out this Kelpie farming book for test spin. Oh, well, we get to go first. It's your turn. Hey, you're back. Hey, you're back just in time. What map is this? Oh, actually, this isn't too bad. Nice. Unfortunately, I only have one freaking card, and it's a golden totem. Uh, oh, yes, go this way. Go this way. We landed on the fortune teller. Give me a creature. Cool. And my turn, I will get rid of the greed. I 
I think they've been using the same announcer since like the PS2 days. Ooh, Undyne. Undyne is an interesting creature. Uh, its HP in battle changes to 30 HP depending on how many water territories you have. Well, what happens if you have no water territory? Well, that means in battle your creature dies. Well, it could also be me because it is actually moving at 40 frames per second on the game. When normally it would be 60. And it's funny because it only does this when I'm streaming. So it's actually moving at, uh, I think 64%. God, all... All, all I'm getting are, uh, Sphere Shields. Yes, give me one moment, let me see if I can actually speed this up. No, not starting soon, you idiot. Okay, this should be actually better now, I think. Okay, this this should actually be better. The final game awaits you. Discard I'm actually gonna get rid of the freaking storm shield. <laughs> Jesus. Stop giving me shields. The final game awaits you. Yeah, now it's running at uh, 50 frames per second. OBS for some reason is, is acting like an idiot. Alright, um, come here. Give me a spell, actually. Cool, I'll take that land drain. I will get rid of uh, the golden totem, and I'm gonna get rid of a greed. I don't really use greed that much, but. See, it would be so much better if I can output from the laptop to the capture card that's right behind this second laptop. Unfortunately, for some reason, Windows 10 does not output to the capture card. It literally uh, puts both displays on the same monitor. Okay, wow, great game, thanks. Let me roll too! If you use it on me, you're an idiot. Well, we'll have it on Waterland soon enough. It's fine with me. This thing is vigorous. That, that doesn't matter to me, lady. Yeah, but see, the game knows what I'm trying to do, and it helps me. Oh. Now that right there, I need to clip this. Um, good luck on your next journey. Good. The problem with Revolt is a card called Fly. No one should ever use it. It sucks. Let me explain. Fly does give you slightly better rolling odds. You're actually, instead of instead of rolling an average of 5.6, you're going to be rolling an average of 6.7 to I think 7.9 roughly when you average everything out. So it is slightly higher. But in Cold Decept, when you just roll two die, like these two die, if you get two Cold Decept symbols. They are technically double zero, and in the game, double zeros equal 12. She rolled a fly, and she rolled three dice, and all three became the scepter symbol, the, the Cold Decept symbol, and she only moved 12. 
fly sucks because in my opinion they forgot to code the third zero. They kept it probably the same for the die. They probably used like if zero zero then that's gonna equal twelve. Well they probably did the same thing. They probably forgot to set that third zero to be eighteen. Because you would think if you're rolling two zeros and double zeros equals twelve, then you would think that with fly rolling three zeros should equal eighteen. It doesn't. It only equals twelve. So now we're gonna level this up to level four. And I'm going to discard my storm shield. So, if you're ever playing Cold Decept Revolt on the 3DS, do not use Fly. Like that right there. Double zeros equals a 12. Now because this thing has Vigorous, I can also exchange it. And now Kelpie is on the board. Um, I'm gonna get rid of Mana because I want to build up my water chains. Foresight. So let's see what her turn yields. Oh, she landed on my golden totem. Now I have an option. I could save the golden totem. Oh, she's not going for it. Interesting. But I could have saved the golden totem or I could kill it this turn. And I'm going to use the secret art to kill it. And it'll give me 200 magic. That's one of the greatest things about the golden totems. The final gate awaits you. I mean, I'm going to go put the little... Um, Echinoderm right there on air. Because remember, we have storm shift. We can transform air level 3 or under air into water, and vice versa, we can turn level 3 water into air. So if I can get that card, I can use that card. I'm going to use land drain though, because she actually has a bunch of land to steal magic from her. Here we go, steal 180 magic. Cool. Now this little buddy... Go level three. Because that, that's the one requirement for the storm shift is you can't just go, okay, I'm gonna level it up to level four and then swap it. You can only use storm shift if you have a level three air land and you can drop that down to water. Alright, now we did get another creature. We have the Makara. So put him down on the water, which will increase the water chain. Now remember, Kelpie, like Old Willow, if an enemy were to pass by it, they have to land on it. There is a card in here, it's a spell card called Quicksand. It does the same thing. Quicksand's a little weaker, it only lasts for two rounds, or until it's triggered. And then the enchantment wears off. Discard now again, this book is not going to be great for multiplayer. You're going to have to change some things up. Let's steal some more magic from her. Drop her down even more. Okay, so I landed on a creature. This book really isn't designed to battle, per se. So I'm not, well, one, I don't have creatures, so I can't anyway. But two, I'm not really even worried about landing on her stuff. Because right now, for all intents and purposes, she is locked. She's never going to leave that north gate going the normal way unless she lands. Like, she can't just skip the Kelpie, she has to land on it. 
Now we have Storm Shift. I can put that from air to water. So now the water chain is going. Okay. Storm Shift is a great card. Is it needed for this? I don't think so. Now what's funny about this is... I can also put Kelpie here. The right creature in the right place. Discard and your I'm gonna get rid of the window pump. Because I have three shields. So right now... Right now she's actually trying to avoid it. You saw that move she did? Instead of landing on it, she just went around it in a uh, square. So let's steal more magic from her and put her in the hole. So we stole another 180 magic. Like I said, Land Drain is probably the best at not only stealing magic from your opponent, but also putting them in the hole and forcing them to... The final gate and forcing them into having to get rid of territory. Now we can build up the water chain to level 4. Have we have an almost power. maxed out chain. Okay, we're almost at a max Kelpie at the top. And max is 20... Uh, 800. Discard your cards. It's your turn. You've earned a reward. Right, now we're gonna level Good up the Kelpie at the bottom journey. section. Okay, this is why having more than one Kelpie, or more than one Old Willow, and ways to protect it, like, this is why you would want to have them in there. She can't take it on. She didn't have enough mana. Have and enough even if she did, she didn't have enough mana to use an item. So she couldn't beat it anyway. Now, technically, I'm flashing. The number one is flashing. That means that the next time I hit a gate, I win. Okay. We are actually going to... I'm going to show you the improper way to use a card. And you can only do it this way if you were going to win the game. Magical Leap. Some people will use Magical Leap right when they're about to hit the last gate. Okay? Unless you're about to win the match, don't waste your Magical Leap. But, if you're going to win the game, and it says user cannot roll the die this turn, that means that it's essentially a holy word zero. And if you've played Cold Deceptive Games Past like Saga, you would know that holy word zero literally was zero and you don't move anywhere. You stay where you are, or you force your opponent to stay where they are. And you can only move within four territories of you. So I can move up to here, I can move there, I can move to that. Or I can literally put myself right on the gate for the win. If you're ever on your last lap and hitting that gate, let's say you're four squares away, hitting that gate means you can win. You can use a magical leap to win. Otherwise, if you're not going to win, do not waste a magical leap. Okay, I'm going to run through this book a couple more times versus a couple other people. Uh, dot end obtained. Okay, finished. So the map is going to be random no matter what. Actually, let's have some fun. I'm going to put it on Jen, and I'm going to put Jen's handicap onto let's put it on level three uh, let's put it on level two uh, ha their handicap settings 
in this game. And handicap doesn't actually hurt the opponent, it's actually the other way around, it hurts you. It actually makes the opponent harder to play against. I did not pull it up beforehand, I'm pulling up the handicap limits right now to tell you what they do. Okay, so, you have handicap limit 1, which is, I think, what I have it set for. Handicap limit. Handicap limit level 1 is the toll fees are up 50%. Okay, so that's basically like them having greed on all of their lands. Handicap level 2 uh, gives a 25% lap bonus. So when they go around the lap, they get an additional quarter of what they would have earned added. So, if they would have earned just 400, they're going to earn 500. Handicap limit level 3 means they get 3 statues in any territories. They put a statue uh, in 3 different random locations, already giving them creatures. Then you get into some really nasty handicaps. Handicap level 4 gives them 50% tolls and 2 halflings. Handicap 5 gives them 25% lap bonus, 25% tolls. They get a um, Phlogoston creature, an Aqualin, an Aqualing, a Squirreen, and a Blitz Raven. In, I think, random locations? Or maybe they put them in the actual element. Phlogoston is fire, Aqualing is water, Squareen is earth, and Blithraven is air. I don't know if it puts them on their matching elements. Handicap level 6 gives them a 25% lap bonus, 50% tolls, and they get two great fossils. Great fossils don't take tolls, but if you kill it, it turns into a Tyrannosaurus. So, even if you were trying to take over their land, you're not killing it and getting rid of it. Handicap level 7, their lap bonus and their toll fee are 50%. And they get one ogre of each element. They get the red, green, yellow, and blue. Handicap level 8 gives them a 50% toll bonus, 75% lap bonus, they get 2 shield maidens and 2 pixies. Handicap level 9 gives them 75% lap bonus, or toll bonus, 100% lap bonus, 2 echinoderms, and 2 great nimbus. And the final one is the worst. They get, at handicap level 10, 100% toll bonus, 100% lap bonus, and one lord of each element. And if I'm not mistaken, those are things that you might have seen like the fire creature, Tiamat. And there's another air one. I don't know them all, but damn, they are hard to, to beat with weaker cards that you probably have. So, giving opponents handicaps actually makes it harder for you to beat them. So with Jen having a level two handicap, let us start the match and see how things go. The final game awaits you. This map, this map isn't too bad. It's your turn. Actually, yes, I'm gonna go this way. Hopefully, I can land on an air land up top here. Like, if I can get a two. Oh, well. That could work. 
put the golden totem here. And when I can, I'm gonna level up the golden totem. Because I have Storm Shift, so I can swap it to water, and then I can replace it with uh, Kelpie. So I'm gonna let me Wind of Hope, see what we get. Anything good? Another shield. Ooh, magical leap. Okay. Can't put a creature down. I'm going to get rid of Storm Shields and Wind of Hope. I don't want to get rid of too many shields. I want them. I want them all, I'm greedy. Discard your cards. It's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of the magical leap because hey, obviously I don't need it. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. Oh, and just an FYI, streams might be a little on the short side for the first few, because I'm still trying to figure out not only what books can I show off, what books do I want to show off on stream, because, like I said, I have access to over, well, I have access to every single card. I have four of every, so I'm good to go on that count, but I need to learn these books before I can teach people. So even though I could literally make not just any book that I want, I could also uh, show off any one that has ever been made that they've done the, the Japanese thing, the book 2 PNG. I don't, uh, yeah, level that up. I don't know how to properly work them. So, until I know how to work them, I'm not gonna do anything. Okay, so they're attacking. And I figured as much. So I'm hoping I can swap that for Kelpie. It's your turn. The final gift awaits you. Um... I gotta hope she doesn't land on it. I have to not only hope that she doesn't land on it... Oh wait, wait, wait! Magical leap. I can magical leap myself. Well, I already know the game. That's not a problem. It's just some books are a little different. And they they work completely weird. Okay, so now that I magical leap, and there's really only two gates you have to hit. The north one and one of the south. There's one on each end. So now that I magical leap, Transform this one into water. So now we already have the requirements for Kelpie. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. I'm gonna put Makara down. And I'm gonna start working on the water chains. But yeah, I already know the game, it's just how to properly use some of these books that uh, Japanese players have been using for a while. Secret art. Change that to water. Now Makara can only change his own to water. Not others. Alright, I'm going to put Mr. Ekino there. So that's why usually when I do a book guide, I only really show one match. Now rebolt's quicker. So you can show off multiple matches. And that's what I plan on doing. Instead of trying to cram 
two or three book guides into one stream. I'm gonna with Revolt. I'm gonna be doing one book guide on two or three different maps versus two or three different people. And this is probably one of the quote-unquote earliest farming books you can create. You can only create this once you complete uh, Quest 4, Mission 8. Then you can unlock what's known as Rich Packs. That's where most of these cards come from. Well, this isn't too, too bad. Level that up to water. So Jen's going to be fine for now. Ish. Oh look, he's going to attack it. How cute. Now he does do critical hit. Just gotta put that out there. He would have did 120 damage if I didn't uh, do that. We're gonna steal magic from from Jen a little bit. Whoa! I didn't pay attention that that was that. Okay. We're gonna exchange the creature for Kelpie. So now Kelpie is on a water land. And it's weak. Weaker than I would like. But I'm gonna gain magic. Good luck on your next journey. And the reason why he can level his things up so quickly is remember, he's getting a lap bonus from the handicap. No. Level this Kelpie. Well, what will be Kelpie in a moment. Now, he landed on this. If he attacks it, I'm gonna let it die. He didn't. Okay. Alright, have fun, Kent. Alright, so now... You've a I think I might be screwed. Good luck on Oof. Your next journey. The final gate awaits you. We're going to exchange this creature with Kelpie. The right creature God, if I get a one, I am so screwed. Now, Jen is going to probably purposely come down this left section with two water land. Yep. Because now he doesn't have to hit Kelpie. Because he can just go back the way he was. Good, I did not hit it. Okay, I'm going to level up this Kelpie. No, I'm gonna wait. Discard your cards. I'm gonna get rid of Golden Totem. He's gonna hit one of the Kelpies. Hmm, that's half one. Okay. Hey, he can he can have all the Waterland chains he wants. Up to level four. Get rid of that. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, Jen just screwed himself. Because now you can see that Kelpie is literally within two turns of him. So we have the greed. We put greed on Kelpie. Remember, Greed doesn't have poison. Greed lets you draw a card now. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next 
after me. And we can also now put uh, a creature on water and build up our water chain. And you can see Jen's mana. He only has 171. So he's, he might try to attack it, but I doubt it. He's actually going to attack the Echinoderm. And I'm going to let that happen. I'm not going to waste the last shield I have on some little thing. You don't have enough magic power. Discard your cards. It's your turn. Let's gain more mana. The final gate awaits you. Put that at max level. Hopefully we can get a Kelpie and place it on there. No. But what we can do is greed this other Kelpie. And then we can level up this Kelpie to the max. I'm going to discard the other greed. Now he's gonna shatter my armor. Oh, he actually did Holy Word 6. I guess it's because he does not want to land on the level 5 Makara. I don't blame him. Now here's here's also another interesting fact about Call the Seth Revolt. Is you see that I'm flashing one. So you know from what I told you that means that I am not only in the lead. But if I if the game were to end right now, I win. Okay, that means that I'm right now winning. The way Coldeseth used to work was you had to land on the main castle. It was usually at the top of every map. And or like the more centralized area. And you would have to land on that. The way Cold Decept Revolt works, you just have to land on any gate. Any gate works in a castle in the fact that if you land on it, you win. The true winner is determined. Look at that split. Oof. Sucks for you, Jen. Alright. Let's, let's change this Jen's Handicap to 3, and let's do the same match. We'll, we'll do another quote-unquote quick match. That's another thing if you've, if you've noticed. In Cold Decept Saga, a book guide could take an hour and a half for just one match. One, a, a quote-unquote long match in Revolt is 45 minutes. That's what we call a long, drawn-out match now, is 45 minutes. Ooh. This map looks like... Ugh. Okay, so he already has one on water, so that kind of sucks. This map is kind of good Weed, I'm going west. Because west and up here means I can put a creature down on water. So right now, I have the requirements for Kelpie met. Certain cards you need to have requirements to, to use. Kelpie, you need uh, a water land. Some creatures you might need two water land. Or Old Willow needs two fire land. And some requirements state that you need to discard a card. So right now I have the requirements for Kelpie. Meaning when I draw Kelpie. Oh, 
I will already have it. But I will already have everything ready just to put it down. Now what are you gonna shatter? You didn't you shatter. I am impressed. The final gate awaits you. So I have to hit the west the east gate now. I went a very long way just to get the requirement of Kelpie out. The final gate awaits you. He's probably going for the shield. Usually that's what they go for is the uh the shields, the armor. Everything. I think if you have Sword of Pluck, no, if you have a scroll, they'll go for a scroll first. Now. But for the most part, yeah, they're, they're going for uh, armor. That is what they want. Place this little buddy down. So right now, I am in second place. So remember I talked about the card gift where you pay a hundred magic and you gain fifty magic and you draw a card based on your rank. Or what well, what was called in Coldest Saga as your standing. Well right now, my rank or standing he is set at, um... I'm an idiot and pulled the wrong card. My ranker standing right now is at, uh, two. I'm in second place. Alright, I'm gonna place this here. Now what's important about this is I have two of the same creatures on the right side. One next to the north gate at the bottom, and one close to the north gate at the top. What's great about that is you see this map and you see how there's a couple areas and they're outside the inner circle. That means when I get Kelpie, Kelpie's gonna go in this inner area. I can't put him where that 288 is that you see in the screen at the top. Because he doesn't have to hit that, he can hit the west gate down here. There are two west gates, you only have to hit one. So he could decide to never hit that, ever. Advance to the next gate. I'm gonna go this way just so I can build up my water territories. I said whenever I get Kelpie, when I put Kelpie on that right side, on top and bottom, no matter where it goes, he's always gonna hit it. The right creature in the right place. Alright, what's the next card? The final nice. awaits you. Let's level this one up to four. Okay, you're gonna shatter probably the mana or the greed? Mana. And then, like here, you can see he has a, a nice fire chain at the top with what's probably a level three. Like, you would never want to hit that. So, don't go up, you'd want to go down. End my turn. Actually, I'm gonna swap that top Echinoderm for the Makara in my hand, because the Makara can uh, convert that air land into water. 
So I'm going to do that next turn. Actually, no. Because I'm going to put this one down here first. Because it can change its own land into water, so I can build up water chains. And then, at any given point in time, whenever I get a Kelpie, I can instantly put the Kelpie down. Because with, vig with creatures with Vigorous, that means that they don't stand down in battle. Or in the game. So, you can not only level up the land, you can use the Secret Art to change it into water, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to use the Secret Art on him, change it into water for 100 magic, and then when it's my turn, I can now also level up his land. And if I were to draw Kelpie right now, I can put Kelpie down on there on my next turn. Kelpie can get swapped because it is uh, not fatigued. That slowed down for some reason, though. We were doing fine, game. No, really, game. We were doing fine. Good luck on your next journey. I don't know what the hell happened. Just dropped uh, about ten frames per second. You know what it is? It's, it's probably because on this map there are so many creatures. That's honestly what the problem is here. This creature for a Makar. Right going to place. discard, discard the, any one of the Echinoderms, it doesn't matter. Alright, so who are you going to magic bolt? You usually magic bolt a creature that has the magic highest bolt. HP. And what's funny about that is because he has Vigorous and he doesn't get fatigued, I can instantly swap him out with another creature. And because I already have another Makara in my hand, BAM! No more 20 HP loss. Pop him off in the Great Beyond. And this is another thing that can happen, is you can just literally get bad draws. Because literally, I am waiting for uh, one Kelpie. One Kelpie right now would ruin his day. Because I can swap it for the, uh, I think it's a level 4? Right there. Wow, game, wow, okay. I'll put this down, and then end my turn. Jeez! Oh, another magic bolt. Oh, but he didn't use it this time. Okay. That is interesting. Discard your cards. It's your turn. Magical leap. 
Alright, just so I don't have to come back to this side again, I'm gonna magical leap myself right on here. I have now landed on the gate. Um, can't really do much, so I'm gonna end the turn. Hopefully, 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 I can now get a kill. Because if I don't get Kelpie right now, this is not looking good! Not looking good at all for me. Oh my god, another freaking magical leap? Jesus. Stop, game. Jesus. This game does not want me getting a Kelpie. At all. This game's like, Kelpie? Why, why would you want that? Who, who would want that craft card? Okay. You can't give me any more magical leaps. I think I went through them all. Oh wow, I'm actually... I didn't even realize he's close to winning. He's actually, all kidding aside, Jen's probably going to win. Like, all kidding aside, this is probably going to be a loss. So I'll probably have to do another match. And that can all come down, like I said, to really bad draws. Because he still has to hit the west gate again. He hit the north gate. Ooh, I got more mana. And it's not gonna help me. So yeah, you're gonna actually see the AI beat me. And again, that that's all coming down to just really bad RNG with with the draws. Like he is in the lead. This book is not designed to attack your creatures or kill them. No, secret art. Sweet double doubles. Oh, I actually won barely. Ugh, that was an ugly match. I guess I don't have to do another match because I won. That was ugly. And it didn't have anything to do with the fact that of his handicap of level 3, which now, every time you, when you unlock somebody's handicap, I think you have to play them twice to get handicap 1. And then once you beat them at handicap 1, you unlock 2. When you beat them at handicap 2, you unlock 3. So on, so on, and so forth. Celebration, Jesus. The only reason why I won is because I used Makara's ability to increase my water land. My water chain. Turning it into water and then landing on the gate made me win. But that, that game just did not want me getting Kelpie at all. 
Okay, so let's exit this. And let's look at this book again. So this is the GP Farming Kelpie book. With the slight modifications, I don't have the Evo Dragons in there. All I have are Window Pulp. So you have four golden totems, which really aren't for holding onto a land, it's just putting it down and then destroying it for the mana. You have Bird Maiden, which we didn't see at all because we probably would have saw Bird Maiden soon. We were going through that book. Um, which, for the secret art of 50 magic, you can give a creature distant movement. It's basically Spirit Walk. Like how I would use the Powder Eater Spirit Walk, where you can move one Powder Eater anywhere on the map. That's basically what Distant Movement is. Then you have the uh, Echinoderm that regenerates and it's Vigorous. And Vigorous, again, is, you know, creatures have a fatigue system. And if a creature has Vigorous means not only can you raise its land every turn, you can move it, and you can exchange it for another creature every turn. So I could raise its land three turns in a row, and then exchange the creature, no problem. Same with, you know, Makar, but then we get to Kelby. Have to have a water land, and if you ever see anything that says G80 and then the water symbol, that means that Kelpie needs 80 mana to play it, and you need to have a water land in your possession. After that, uh, when Kelpie's on a water land, any sifter except for the user, except for the person who owns that Kelpie, has to land on it. So it's great if you have Kelpie in a level 5 land and you have it greeted with greed. You can increase how much they have to pay exponentially, and they have to land on it all the time. The last creature you have is Makara, another vigorous creature, and its secret art is for 100 magic it can transform the land that it owns into water. Great thing for this is you level up the land you have it on to 3 or 4, transform it into water. Now. Secret Arts are actually used during the spell phase. You can only use one spell or one Secret Art. So you can use Makara's Secret Art to transform its level 3 or 4 land or whatever land you have into water. And then, on that same turn, right after you roll and you move, you can put a Kelpie down on there. You can exchange it for Kelpie. Two items we have, Spear Shield, as long as a creature can use uh, armor, it neutralizes all normal attacks. And Storm Shield, neutralizes normal attacks when a crypt creature is water or air. So you're not going to use Storm Shield on Golden Totem or Bird Maiden, but you can use, you, but you can use the uh, sp uh, Spear Shield. Then spells, Foresight, you look at the top six cards in your book, select one of them to place into your hand. Unless you accidentally tap X super fast, and uh, you pull out the first card that you didn't want. And you have Greed, which adds the Greed Enchant to target creature, which Gives any creature, any creature, anybody that lands on that has to pay one and a half times the toll fee. So as you saw, that one uh, twenty, like one twenty-eight hundred Kelpie is now thirty-four hundred. Land drain uh, steals thirty magic times how many territories a target enemy scepter possesses. So, if you were to use this card on me and I had 10 land, you would gain, you would actually steal 300 magic from me. Magical Leap, you can transform to, you can transform, you can transport to any location that is one to four spaces away from you, and you can't roll the die that turn. So you can land on a gate. 
if you're not going to win the match, never use Magical Leap to get to the gate to finish a lap. That's a waste of a Magical Leap. As you saw that one time when I went past the gate, I was able to land on the gate again because I, I passed my lap. Right? I, I lapped in the last match. I lapped the gate. I was a couple, I was one space away from the gate. And I magical leaped back on the gate so I can count that as one of the three gates needed. So I didn't have to come back to that section. Mana. Cost free, gain 50 magic per lap level. So if you have three laps, you gain 150 magic. Storm Shift will change any level 3 air land into water or any level 3 water land into air. And finally, I replace the Evo Dragons with Wind of Hope. If you're starting off, if you beat Quest 4 Mission 8, also known as 4 8, you would, instead of using the Wind of Hopes, you would want to have the Evo Dragons. And I'm actually going to show off a couple Evo Dragons because the book guide is done. So I'm going to quote unquote end the stream here just so I can cut this for uh, book guide purposes. And then I'm going to show you quickly the uh, Evo Dragon before I actually end the stream. So first I want to say that was the the Kelpie GP farming. You can use this book to gain 10 matches, to beat 10 matches as quickly as possible. So you can upgrade the age of the dragons, and then you can reset the age so you can gain mana or uh, GP. You gain 300 GP per age reset, per age per age level that it was when it reset it, when you reset it, and it can only have uh, 10 is, is the highest age it can be. Okay, so now let's look at an Evo card.